Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Yep, we're covering it all. So if you want to throw in some earbuds, I'll give you a second to go find some. Okay, we're back. Specifically today, we're addressing sex during pregnancy and postpartum. However, this conversation was so rich with information and so important to dive into fully that I decided to break it up into two episodes. So this episode is going to focus on sex during pregnancy, and the following episode is going to be all about sex postpartum. Our guest, Cindy Sharkey, is an RN with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing and has been a healthcare professional for over 35 years. Throughout her career as a certified childbirth educator, OBGYN nurse, and a speaker, she truly believes that with the right information and education, women can reclaim their sexual experience and their sexual relationship, and that is especially true during pregnancy. We cover the most important relationship that we all need to discover within the world of sex, and that relationship is the one that you have with yourself. Once we discover, first of all, how to love ourselves and what sexual pleasure is for ourselves, then we can begin to navigate all the changes that will come along with our sexual relationship throughout motherhood. Now, to preface both of these episodes, Cindy and I want to make sure that you know that she is not providing any kind of medical advice, and we recommend that you seek guidance and professional medical advice from your doctor so they can address your specific needs. You are listening to the Mamas in Training podcast, giving aspiring and expecting first-time moms guidance and community from mamas who have been there. I'm Jessica Lorian, your host, and a mama in training myself. An autoimmune disease has delayed my journey, so I've decided to learn right alongside you all about motherhood. By the end of this episode, you'll know whether sex during pregnancy is safe, what it might feel like, what to do if your partner doesn't want to have sex, or if you don't want to, good positions for sex during pregnancy, and so much more. The best time to navigate sex and begin to develop a good relationship with it is now. So I am so happy you're here and make sure to tune in to the next episode where we continue the conversation into and through postpartum. And now let's talk about sex, baby. So why did you become so passionate about this topic to begin with? You know, I have been a nurse for 35 years and I've done a lot of years in, in women's health, a lot of years in teaching, speaking, education, other kinds of community. Where, that's a great thing about nursing, so many things you can do. Mm-hmm. But I just have always had a passion for women. I really, I care about women. I have a heart for women. And I found working labor and delivery and teaching childbirth education and baby care, all of those things way back, you know, when I first started, that that's kind of where my heart was and really trying to prepare women and answer their questions. And I'm comfortable talking about sex. So a lot of people aren't. And Mm -hmm. I happen to be comfortable, but I just, I felt the real need from women. They, They just did not have the education that they needed, I certainly didn't growing up, to really enjoy and experience their sexuality in a positive and pleasurable way. That's amazing. And getting as vulnerable or deep as you want or feel comfortable with, what about for you? You're a mom of three girls, right? So in your pregnancy and birthing motherhood postpartum journey, what did that all feel like for you when you were navigating sex? I think I was trying to figure it all out, just like every new mom. I really struggled postpartum with all three girls, so that was a huge factor. I had a lot of support, so I was very fortunate. And probably the biggest factor is I have a partner that is loving and kind and thoughtful and really for me. (laughs) <laughs> mm. what I mean we don't all have that but I did mm. and um, we learned early on to begin communicating about sex and that's a huge key to it all you know there are so many taboos and there's such a silencing 
around and surrounding sex. And you mentioned needing the education and that having that education and information is really key. So what would you say, I mean, we're going to dive into the the pregnancy and, and the postpartum sex, but what would you say just overall is kind of the first thing that we need to know with regards to sexuality and us as women as we enter this phase of motherhood? Interestingly, I think it's not just this phase of motherhood. What I mm-hmm. found with women, Jessica, is that overall we we need to embrace our normal, natural sexuality, our curiosity, our desire, our desire for pleasure. All of these all of these things are so normal and yet, like you said, they're silenced. And so then we come into big transition phases like pregnancy or after a baby comes into the family and and these just not complicate but add a whole nother layer Mm -hmm. you know to the whole sexuality piece and with a partner if you're parenting with a partner so something that came up for me in in doing the research on this is really the the number one most important thing of just understanding yourself and what you find to be pleasurable and connecting with your body. I want to talk first about the importance, I guess if you would say that, to masturbation, truly. Because I think I've heard as you are, you know, for example, when when we dive into the postpartum phase and we're moving into pleasure with another person and what we're comfortable with, in a way, we almost should connect first with ourselves and how we're feeling before anything else. And I know people are probably listening are probably already starting to squirm in their chairs. But keep, stay with us. You got this. <laughs> well, stay with us. And sometimes I, I, I reframe it as self-pleasure because yeah. so many women especially have a negative connotation to the word masturbation because mm-hmm. they've been shamed or silenced over it or, or what have you. Mm-hmm. But in this phase, especially what I try to encourage women to do is exactly what you said, especially postpartum, because they will reach out so often and say, something's not right, or I don't, quote, work, or things don't feel the same, or I'm afraid, and my fear is holding me back. And these are all important and normal things that to think through. And I think when we allow ourselves to explore our own body and start with that relationship with ourselves, we all have to have a sexual relationship with our own selves first. Then we can bring that to a partnership. Then we can communicate what we figure out about ourselves and our body and what she's telling us, right? Mm-hmm. To a partner. It's right. so important. And, and really healthy. But now how do we, for those who don't even know where to begin, who've never even explored their own personal sexual pleasure, where do you even start? How do you actually, whether it's a mental thing or physical thing, like, how do you start? I would say first just have a conversation with yourself and your body. I have really changed my language over the many years about my own body and how I talk to her and how I treat her. I didn't do a very good job when I was younger. I, I was pretty mean to her, you know, didn't let her eat, worked her out to death, did all of it. And um, <laughs> I'm at the stage now where I try to listen to what she's telling me. What, what does she need? What, what is she feeling? And in relation to our sexuality, this is, a, this is a big piece for each of us. What do we feel safe with? What feels comfortable? Even just touching our own selves and laying a hand on ourselves anywhere on your body, breathing and just saying, what do I feel? What do I sense here? Do I feel comfortable moving my hand to my abdomen? Can I just, can I hold myself here? It doesn't have to be put your hands right on your genitals and start rubbing Mm -hmm. around. That's not really where it starts. It needs to start more simply and a lot with listening and a lot without an expectation of something. What do I mean by that? 
I mean, we're not looking to have an orgasm necessarily or be very super aroused. We're more getting to the place of, can I touch my own body with comfort and confidence and learn to understand myself? When we're going through something like pregnancy, our body can start to feel almost like a machine, I, I would imagine, hmm. and I hear and everything becomes so medical, everything becomes so by the book. You almost, to a certain extent, don't even want to feel anything down there, you know, or, or maybe we get medication to not feel. So then it's like all of a sudden, we're supposed to, A, during pregnancy, be comfortable with this changing body that that for years we're trying to shape and control or make according to society's ways of perfection and then when we're in postpartum we're trying to connect back to this body that's now so foreign and we're almost rushing for it to have an outcome to either deliver an orgasm or to pleasure someone else and I think that first step of just physically connecting in and listening is it's really, it, it really just opened my eyes right there because I think that's truly the number one. Yes, and I think a lot of women haven't felt the permission to do that. They haven't felt that that's, that's a normal way to be. It's a normal thing to do, and it really, really is a healthy, normal way to be. I'm going to go ahead and share a, a personal secret fear of mine during future pregnancy, and I, I wonder if anyone out there has the same fear. You know, as we're talking about connecting to our body and, and how we're going to feel, I often don't feel comfortable and I feel like a very fit person, but I always have this thing in the back of my mind, especially with my abdomen, you know, it's not enough. It's never where I want it to be. It can always be better. And depending on how I eat or how I'm feeling or what's going on during this moment of my life, I, I usually don't feel as willing to be sexually active or or engaged in intimacy and so you know we can just say be kind to yourself or give yourself a break or whatever but are there any practices that we can do especially as we're moving through pregnancy and, and into this postpartum phase our body is changing so much that can help us support how to just accept us for who we are the beautiful female body person human that we are in this world it's beautiful that you share that because it's a very common theme, especially around our abdomens and, you know, where people call them their stomach. You know, this seems to be the area for so many women of discontent. Isn't it so crazy, too, that we feel that way and then that's what we praise when we have the bump that's growing and look at that bump and it's a beautiful bump and then the baby's out and we instantly shame it. Yes, Yes, and then we instantly go to, I need to get back to right. something, back to, I had this lot conversation on my podcast with Wendy Palomutu about this theme of having to get back to something, get our body back to somewhere that is, it's like a mantra in culture that is so unhealthy. We're not trying to get back to where we were, we're, we're anew, we're, yeah. we're changed. We, we're we have born. Carried, we're reborn. We have carried and birthed a whole human. We are new. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to go back to. If we could change that dialogue alone, just by us talking about it here, Jessica, that would be huge, you know, for those listening. You asked about practices, and I think it starts now. So with whoever's listening, it starts now with just what we just talked about, learning to put your hands on your own body, breathe in quiet and listen to her and even learning to see her as a her mm -hmm. <laughs> as as a subject, not an object. And yeah. I learned this language from Hillary McBride. She talks a lot about bodies and her work has been pivotal for me. And I, I just keep pressing into that, not treating my body like an object, but a subject. It's a completely different way to see ourselves. What is the mantras in our heads? Oh, I know what yeah. mine was back in the day. It was, mm -hmm. it was so mean. I don't even talk to my almost friend like that. 
let yeah. alone my <laughs> best friend, right? Yeah. But it takes some real shift. It really does. And this this season of pregnancy and birth and entering motherhood is a perfect time to dive into changing that narrative for ourselves and with others. And so as we think about sex during pregnancy, there are so many questions that come up for me. I went ahead and pulled my audience in both my community and on Instagram, and there were so many questions that came up and so many consistent questions too. But I'd just like to ask you first, what should our overall mindset be? I am individual and I need to do me. Not my sister, not my cousin, not my friend, not my coworker. I need to figure out, you know, what's going to work for me in this stage, not compared to anyone else. Why I say that is because each woman is so individual and each pregnancy is so individual and each dynamics within couples is, it's all of it. Yes. And all of that comes into play when you're talking about sex. So many of the questions that were coming up are individual based, you know, like one of them first is, is it always okay? Is it always safe? Can it harm your baby? Should, is there a time that you should stop? And I mean, I'd love for you to just to answer that in general, but also just notating, of course, this is not your specific medical advice. And if you're experiencing something, maybe for you and your situation, you do need to stop or maybe it's not safe. So I think that's a really great place for us to just be in the mindset of that before we, we talk about these questions. But overall and in general, like, is it safe? Can it harm? Should we yes. stop at any point? Yes. Overall, in general, it's safe. There, there's nothing to hold you back unless there is. <laughs> so what right. do I mean by that? If you have a medical concern or if you have preterm labor or if possibly if you're carrying multiples or if you have a placenta previa, if you have a, a, a medical condition that's affecting you, your body and the pregnancy, then you will probably be encouraged to not have sex orgasms intercourse, either for a period of time or for the pregnancy. But that's very individual and it's mm -hmm. not the majority of, of people. Now, can we expect it to feel different? Like, I mean, of course, we'll have this belly that we have to navigate, but like, overall... Good question. You have to remember two things. One is your blood flows increased during pregnancy, mm -hmm. and your tissues are engorged because of that, right? Because there's blood mm -hmm. flow to tissues, and you have hormones. So really three. Yeah. <laughs> Probably more than that, but those are the basic... So these things are going on. And for some women, they are, they're horny all the time in pregnancy. They <laughs> feel great. They have their blood flows going, their hormones. Like it's the perfect, it's the perfect little setup for them and their own body. And they, they love every minute, right? On the flip side, you have the woman who's either the engorgement and blood flow and hormones triggers her in the opposite direction no desire, uncomfortable. So there's there's a wide gamut of how it can be. And then there's a lot of in between. And what I like to remind women, Jessica's, for the women early on, especially who are nauseated and vomiting and so fatigued, think about if you feel like that normally, mm -hmm. are you really interested in sex? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the same for pregnancy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's not going to be any different just because it's like, oh, well, it's because she's pregnant. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you're fatigued and throwing up, you know, barfing your brains out, you're not, you know, your desire is going to be in the toilet. Right. 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 So normal. Now, will will you expect to still have a similar orgasm if, if you are able to have those? Should we expect our partner to kind of feel the same way? For the most part, you know, people say it's the same. Some women think they have stronger orgasms or more orgasms because of the increased blood flow. And some, there's so much sensitivity to it, they feel uh, differently. But I'm glad you brought up the partner. Because mm -hmm. so often people leave the partner out mm -hmm. and they're going through a lot of change too. Nothing like you, right. but especially if you're married to a man or your partner is male, they are not experiencing what you're experiencing. And they have a lot of fear often and questions too. 
So I can't tell you the amount of times teaching childbirth class, how many men would come up at the break and be like, Cindy, do you think the baby can see my penis? Or do you think <laughs> the baby feels my penis? Or do you think that like I'm my penis is hitting? I'm like, okay, listen to me. <laughs> These are normal questions. And I'm so glad you're asking because I can see that you're afraid and you have no need to fear. The baby cannot see your penis. The baby mm-hmm. cannot feel your penis. You are all is well. Yeah. And yet we laughed, you and I, but yeah. think of it. You know, this yes. is a common, very common question, but mm-hmm. people don't feel like they can ask it out loud. Right. Now, one question that kept on coming up repeatedly when I asked my community about this was, what if your partner doesn't want to have sex? And maybe they, they're they feeling either those fears mm-hmm. or they're just nervous with the change of your body. Mm-hmm. And how can we encourage them or should we? How do we navigate that? Great question. Those kind of situations, I like to encourage couples to think outside of the scripted intercourse box. This is a (laughs) mantra for me anyway. (laughs) But sex is much more than intercourse. And especially in pregnancy and postpartum, it's a great time to explore that. Whether that's you know, just with touching or a toy or oral sex, or as long as you're not blowing into her vagina, all is well. Mm -hmm. You know, everything doesn't have to be about the penis and the vagina. Let's think Mm -hmm. outside of that. And also maybe mutual self-pleasuring, mutual masturbation, where your partner can see that you're experiencing pleasure and that all is well and that there's nothing to fear you know right right what i mean try some different things if it's not in your normal toolbox of of you know sexual intimacy and we can probably expect that you know missionary would probably be a little bit challenging so is it common for us to expect we're probably going to need to try some different positions or are there any that you find people prefer more than others Good question. Yeah. A common question because you're as you get bigger, you're going to have to navigate your growing abdomen, right? right. And that creates a little bit of space, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Number two, when you're laying on your back, the heavier right, your the abdomen gets, the, that's not great for your own blood flow. So mm-hmm. missionary position isn't really ideal, mm-hmm. though some people can tolerate it for a few minutes or so and do fine. I'm not saying it's totally off the table. Yeah. But I would say as you, the baby gets bigger, a lot of people like to switch to sideline positions or rear entry positions where you can support yourself on all fours and they can be behind you or over a couch or up against a wall or, you know, that kind of position allows your abdomen to be free, right? Mm -hmm. And also any position where you're on top that you can be comfortable in because then you control not only the depth of penetration and the speed and all of that, but you also control how much compression's on your, on your baby and abdomen and what's comfortable for you. Right. But what's comfortable for you. That's the real, that's the real point here. What, whatever you find comfortable, you may find one positions it for you during pregnancy and okay, well, great. What if during pregnancy, we're, we're just not that into it. Do you go back to that idea of that in- intimacy is just can take many different forms? Like I, I think some of the hardest things that I hear from people to navigate is just like, how do we communicate to our partner? Maybe, maybe they, it's the opposite of what we just talked about, right? Maybe they love the look of your body and they're so turned on by how you look and you act as a pregnant female. What if you're like, meh, not feeling it? Yes. How about this just any time of life? Well, <laughs> but, yeah. Sure. But I do, I would say, you know, in this stage, what I like to encourage couples to do is be sure communication is the key to all things good sex. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's the key to all things good relationship, but especially about sex. Mm-hmm. And so this is a really good time to learn how to talk about sex if you haven't. Because you can use the pregnancy as your little jump start, right? Or whatever mm-hmm. you're feeling to say, I really desire you for some reason, whether it's the hormones or, you know, just the changes in my body. I'm really, I just really have a desire to be cuddled or 
for us to just really spoon and hold on to each other. It, it's not that I don't want you. I just have a lot of feelings going on right now. Or mm. I have a lot of heartburn right now. And I just right. can't quite, can't quite, you know, just get past, settle, it. Yeah. Get past it. Or, right. you know, whatever it is. But be honest, especially in letting your partner know it's really not about them. Because where do you think they go in their heads? Right. Is, oh, she's she's pregnant now. She she doesn't desire me or I'm not attractive to her or, you know, whatever it is. You know how it's so often this is what we do we, with the story we tell ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to say, I'm feeling this way. And I would love to do this so that we can stay connected, even though I'm not quite, I just can't quite get over that little, you know ready to move the next stage or again outside your usual sexual repertoire pick something new maybe you want to give each other a massage with a warm massage candle maybe you want to just touch each other all over and look for erogenous zones and tell each other what they are I mean think outside the box Jessica that's that's the key to long-standing relationships and great sex and isn't it so hard for us to do for whatever dang reason? I, <laughs> Maybe well, we just need to hear someone to tell us. Well, because we haven't been taught or yeah. shown or mm -hmm. and what we have seen and heard has been miserable, yeah. <laughs> frankly, or or wrong, mm -hmm. you know, or scripted. Now, during this phase, even before we get pregnant, you know, preconception, I think one thing I wanted to just touch on quickly is the way that we often have to do many things like for myself, you know, I have to go through this whole medical journey, I have to get myself to even the ability where it's safe and medically okay, to try to conceive. And oftentimes, if women are having trouble conceiving, uh, they're going through fertility challenges, this sense of trying can not only be exhausting for you, for the couple, but for your partner, your partner can start to feel like a machine. Or, you know, it could be the type of thing where, like, you never had sex before, but then all of a sudden, no, you're trying to have a baby. So, like, now it's all about, like, let's get to it. How do we approach and navigate that so that we can have a good relationship with our partner, but also still try to have this thing we desire so much? It's a good question. I would, I would like to actually defer to couples who've really gone through yeah, fertility challenges, probably for better advice on that. Because what I feel like having taken care of women through infertility, but it's not the same as experiencing it, and I didn't. But I would say what I usually encourage them with is if you can communicate how you're feeling and your desire for your partner and their desire for you, I just think that goes a long way. We all want to feel desired. It's not so much about the sex all the time as it is about the sexual intimacy, the erotic energy between you two. And I think in those kind of harder situations, whether it's fertility or cancer, or what, you know, medical conditions that make it difficult, it's this seeing our sexual intimacy as a much bigger picture and communicating our desire for each other. I think it starts with that. Communication is number one. It is always number one. And yeah. even though we say that and everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Being really proactive about that, I think, especially related to sex and maybe in these kind of situations too, not trying to address the 10 things that are going on, but one thing at a time, anything related to sex or hard topics together. I feel like when we don't bring the whole bucket, mm -hmm. but we just bring one cup at a time to talk about and navigate, I think that is helpful. And again, mm. these I statements, not you don't desire me. You don't want to do it just for fun. You just want to do it to get pregnant. I'm using an example. Instead of I miss being close to you. I miss just holding you. I miss, you know, just the energy of a quickie that doesn't mm. have anything to do with getting pregnant or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. trying to come up with real life scenarios, right, you know, where right. you communicate what you're feeling and also your desire and then let your partner speak to that. And maybe not in the bedroom, Jessica. 
Yes. How about when you're walking, holding hands yes. or yeah. sitting side by side on the couch or driving in the car somewhere, just the two of you, those kind of situations seem to allow for these conversations often to be a little bit more comfortable. So that's just a little, little tip for that. That's such a good key. Ah, I hate to stop this conversation. Isn't it so crazy how sex can be tied up into things we never think about? like our personal relationship with our body and the massive mental load that comes with sex and motherhood. The last tip Cindy gave is so important for us to remember. We tend to bring up these challenging conversations in the heat of the moment, and that is where we can expect to not communicate properly and to not get the response that we're hoping for from our partner. In all things sex, remember, Circle back to these topics in a calmer time, when you can both listen and communicate with a clear head. Cindy was giving us so much to think about that I had to break this up into two episodes. So come back next week to hear all about sex postpartum. You thought this topic was complex? Sex postpartum has so many of us suffering in silence. Starting this conversation about sex is one of the most important things that we can do. There should not be shame around it, and we're all feeling the same way. So, let's talk about it. If you have a question about sex and want to get feedback today and hear from others that are in the same boat, then join us in the free Facebook community, Mamas in Training. It's as simple as clicking on the link in the show notes. Put up your question today and hear back from others how they navigated sex during pregnancy. Let's together stop feeling shameful and start talking about sex, baby. If you enjoyed the show today, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode and leave a review on Apple Podcasts so I know how to better serve you. I'd also love for you to join our community of Mamas in Training on Facebook. You can find me at Mamas in Training on Instagram and at mamasintraining.com. For Mamas in Training, I'm Jessica Lorian. We're in this together.